Okay guys, a little while ago I uh, showed a metal detector that I was building the uh, Pulse Induction uh, Mini Pulse Plus and uh, at the time I showed the detector working on the bench and uh, in its housing but not completed but up to the working stage where everything was working and it was sort of usable now I've actually gone and finished the detector altogether um, I wanted to put it in a little case, there's the uh, coil connector at the bottom I wanted to put it in a little case that I could hang off my shoulder because uh, apart from uh, well, using it on a beach or whatever which I'm probably never going to get to do um, I also wanted it for other applications as well and for that I really needed to be in a case you know, in a bag so uh, yeah, it's the finished product case opens up and um, there's the actual uh, front panel I made a uh, front panel label on the printer and um, put all the uh, writing on it and then a, a clear coat of uh, plastic uh, protector over the top of everything and there it is it's got no coil on it so it's uh, kind of sounding a little bit agonized there basically the headphone socket there the uh, on off switch, off in the middle, down for on when I want to charge the battery I flick it up to charge and um, I have to take it out of its case to charge it but there's a socket on the back and I've got a, uh, there's a LiPo 6 amp LiPo battery in there I've got a special charger for it so um, yeah that's it, threshold Sampling delay, it all works quite well. Turn that off. Got the standard uh, mine lab type connector on the back, 5 pin. Um, when I actually tuned this detector and adjusted it, I actually set it up for use with uh, mine lab type coils. Although I've got a couple of homemade coils that also work on it quite well, but uh, coils are a funny thing it's really not worth all the trouble that you have to go through to make one you're better off just buying a second hand uh, mine lab or coil tech or whatever coil um, unless you want to make one just for the sake of learning how to make one then uh, yes it might be okay but uh, if you need a coil for a pulse induction detector I, I would recommend not wasting your time building one rather just buy one having said that uh, I have built a couple of uh, coils um, and I might do a uh, how to on uh, building a coil for a pulse induction detector there's lots of uh, detectors out there uh, in kit form these days uh, the surf PI has been very very popular with a lot of people the hammerhead uh, it's been also very popular Barracuda the mini pulse plus which is this one here chance PI which I've also built I'll show that in a minute so um, there's been lots and lots of kit detectors out there and quite a lot of people have built them and from what I can see on YouTube most people uh, fall down when it comes to uh, making a coil that works um, any piece of wire will work but if you want a coil to work properly and be sensitive there's quite a few things you have to take into account and unfortunately most people don't take anything into account they just uh, yeah 20 20 turns of uh, enamel copper wire around an 11 inch uh, form and uh, there's your coil well unfortunately uh, you'll end up with a coil that works it'll detect uh, a ring at you know 15 or 20 centimeters detect a, co uh, a coin at uh, 15 or 20 centimeters but it's not going to work as well as it could or as well as the detector is capable of so um, yeah one of these days I'll, I'll put together a how-to video on making a 
coil for a pulse induction detector the proper way using the proper materials and at least you give yourself a, uh, a very good chance of making a coil that will make your detector work the way it was designed to. I've built quite a few detectors uh, through the years and uh, quite a few coils as well. Anyway, that's the uh, Mini Pulse Plus. Um, fully finished, fully functional, works quite well. The kind of detection distances I'm getting on this particular pulse induction detector is very, very similar to what I get on a mine lab pulse induction machine. So it obviously works quite well. I'm getting very, very similar sensitivity as well to very, very small objects. Where this detector falls down is if you take it out into the gold fields, um, it doesn't like the mineralized ground at all. And because it doesn't have a ground balance feature, it um, it falls down so but on a beach if you're using this on a beach or on a park or normal soil it probably works as well as a mine lab does sensitivity wise all right that's the mini pulse plus i'll just quickly show a couple of other detectors that i'm currently playing with and uh, that'll be it for this video okay hang on a second be back in a minute Okay, we're back again. Now this is another detector that I built a while ago. It's not quite finished yet, but it's uh, nearly there. It does work. It's fully functional. I just uh, haven't quite finished the uh, the front panel for it. This one's called a Chance PI. It's a pulse induction detector. It's uh, got a processor there that does a bit of uh, uh, housekeeping and also um, produces all the timings and all that. And it's um, supposedly it's one of the very, very few pulse induction detectors that you can build that actually discriminates. So um, I'm not going to hook it up now and show you how it works, but it does work reasonably well. And it does actually discriminate. So uh, it uses multi-period sampling, similar to what the mine labs do. And it's able to actually discriminate uh, via all these different tones and uh, things that it produces. Um, I've put it in a temporary box which has had about 50 other projects in it through the years. Standard uh, 5 pin type mine lab socket on the back. Of course I can use this with my mine lab coils and also some of my homemade coils. Good thing about this detector is actually got a function where um, you can actually adjust the pulse delay in steps. Uh, sorry, the, the sampling delay in steps and uh, this detector will actually show you whether your coil is good or not depending on what sort of settings you can run it at. Okay, the detector you're looking at at the moment is the TGSL-EDU. It's a, uh, you can get it as a kit of parts and you put it together yourself. This is a VLF detector um, the good thing about this detector is it's, um, it actually has a ground balance that works. It, uh, it's got a discriminate that works extremely well. It's got a discriminate on off switch and also a discriminate level. Sensitivity on off. Um, it's just purely a, um, when you use the discriminator, the more you advance that setting, the, um, it starts to knock out all these different metals starting with uh, just basic iron and rusty stuff nails and stuff and then uh, tin foil uh, you can also adjust it to knock out uh, aluminium pull tabs uh, aluminum pull tabs if you're in the states obviously <laughs> um, As I say, the main good thing about this detector is it's got very, very good sensitivity. It'll pick up a uh, typical coin at about uh, 34 to 36 centimeters. That's so extremely good sensitivity. Discrimination works extremely well. And it doesn't lose a lot of sensitivity when you use it in discrimination mode. So uh, I've already had this hooked up and, uh, and working. I'm now in the process of putting it in a, in a box.
don't know where the lid is at the moment, but anyway, the box is uh, kind of got a slanted uh, front panel. There's a speaker wire there which I haven't connected yet to a speaker. And I go through these again on off switch. That's the um, discriminate on off. That's the sensitivity. Discriminate level. Ground balance. Headphone socket. On the back, like all of my detectors, 5 pin mine lab type plug. Socket to charge the batteries. I intend to put rechargeable battery pack inside there, so there's a socket to actually charge the uh, recharge the batteries when they're flat. There will be a speaker up here, of course, uh, which will sit up here on top of the board on the top cover, and there's a rechargeable battery pack that sits in there. It's a fairly economical uh, detector, it doesn't use a lot of current, so a small uh, 12 volt rechargeable pack would last quite a while. I'll just get the cover and pop the cover on for a second. Just hang on a minute, I'll just come back in a sec. Okay, we're back again. Got the cover on the uh, detector. That's basically what it'll look like. Um, as you can see, it's got a uh, interesting look. I've got some cables uh, poking out the side here. It's got an interesting uh, slanted kind of uh, cover. That's the basic unit. So I'll um, we'll just drag up the coil for that. Cool, I'm going to have to go back a bit. Um, the coil is in a bit of a mess at the moment because I, uh, I had it all set up for test purposes and uh, just recently I actually um, pulled the coil uh, apart and um, shielded it. So it's seen a bit of a mess, but anyway, I'll give you a quick look at that. I'll just put the camera down for a minute. As I say, the coil uh, looks a little bit messy because it was in the uh, process of being shielded. You can see my shielding material there. Um, the toothpicks are purely there just to uh, adjust it roughly for test purposes. This type of the detector coil um, it's very similar to what would be a double D coil in a uh, mine lab detector. And the way they have to be set up is there's a, um, you, know, you have to adjust that spacing to get the minimum amount of transfer between the transmit coil and the receive coil. And once you've got that set up, you kind of glue it down into position and uh, it's ready to go. Uh, that coil is ready and it all works, it's shielded and it works well. I'm just waiting to put it into a uh, coil housing. I'll put it up on that foam thing just so that I could actually uh, set it up approximately and test it, make sure that the uh, detector discriminates properly and ground balances properly. Ground balance and a discriminate um, is quite uh, sensitive according to how you've uh, configured the coil. So. Before I went and put it all in the case, I wanted to make sure that it's all working the way it should, which it is. Anyway, that's it for that. Okay, so that uh, concludes this video, I think. Um, the uh, Mine Lab detector, the F1A4 that I'm uh, slowly modifying and playing with, is. Um, going well. I've done a few more little modifications to it. I took it out last week again with a buddy of mine who went out uh, into the gold fields. He was using the uh, 5000, I was using the uh, F1A4. I didn't find any gold, he found two pieces. Um, one very very small piece and one um, piece that would have been I guess around a gram or something like that. The other piece was a sub-gram size, quite small. The good thing about it is I was able to um, test my detector on his tiny little nugget. And uh, it was doing something very similar to the 5000, so I was quite happy with that. And that's without any uh, modifications to the electronics at all. So I'm using the uh, standard 8-inch coil that comes with those uh, detectors. So I was quite uh, quite happy with that.
I didn't find any gold, but he did, so it was still a good day. Uh, it was good to uh, at least somebody found something. <laughs> That's the main thing.